All right. Uh, yeah, here we are. Um, well, let's just call this opening the vault with dill pickle. Um, my name is Mason. Uh, my name is Dylan, otherwise known as Dill Pickle. And for now, we are the hosts of Opening the Vault. Um, make some money, because my last name is Banks. <laughs> um, True that. It is the evening of October 24th. It is 98 degrees out. 98. Nice warm night. Yeah, and it's already dark, too. You know, you would think it would go down, but it does not. No, uh, that's, that's a fall in San Diego for you. Mm-hmm. So what did you want to discuss tonight, Mason? Um, I was thinking, well, this is a rough sketch so far, but what I was thinking was um, we would talk about, I guess, how, I guess we could start out first with how we first got interested or introduced to acting for the stage and what our process is like getting into the characters, because I know it's different for everybody. Everybody finds mm-hmm. something that works for them, whether it's more physical or intellectually based. Um, and I guess I wanted to pick the brains of, of some people. Including me. Yeah, including the Mr. Dill Pickle. Okay. Famous, famous for <laughs> Driver and Anonymous, soon to be featured in Coyote on a Fence. We open uh, November 17th. We run through the 19th. Come see us in the Experimental Theater. <laughs> <laughs> Shameless plug. Um, yeah, I had my first part for stage. It was a sixth grade production of Macbeth the Musical. And I know Macbeth and musical don't really sound like they go hand in hand, but it's a lovely children's musical adaptation of the story of Macbeth, mm-hmm. filled with uh, ghosts and on-screen deaths, and a nice uh, <laughs> closing number of Macduff singing kind of a end of the football game, we've won type of song. Um, I played the porter, the one that answers the door when, I believe it's, uh, it's the King, uh, King Duncan, gets there. He, he opens the door to let him into the castle, oh. uh, Macbeth's castle. At the very beginning. Yes. Right. Yeah. So I, I had uh, not too many lines. I was in one song, but in, um, in addition to that, it was interesting. My teacher liked, uh, liked the chemistry between me and the, the actor that was playing. Um, I don't know if he had a main role, but Perry Robinson friend from elementary school liked our chemistry so much that she ended up in between scenes we added mini um, Shakespeare kind of condensed Shakespeare plays nice. so we told Cleopatra um, I believe we told Romeo and Juliet and a few other ones and we were narrating those scenes together and it was kind of a fun uh, just just to add more to the play because nice. they wanted to give us more lines I guess but yeah that was my first first role how about you? Um, my first, the first one that I remember, well, you know, I, uh, I was in fourth grade. I was at an elementary school in Orange County, and um, our teacher at the time, he he's, he was really good with like math and art, and he, he said he was gonna put on a play, a cast from the from the class, and I remember thinking, I really want to be the villain. <laughs> I really want to be the villain. Got that dark and, side from the beginning. Yeah, but it was weird because like it was it's still hard for me to embrace sometimes that really um, energetic side. And that was like the first um, tough part, or not tough part, but going against my natural personality was your and natural the, calm disposition. Yeah, and I like to be calm. Calming it helps you maintain control of so many things. Mm-hmm. But uh, this one was great, and. He had this fake mustache, and I remember one time, one performance, because I was wearing black and I had this this cape, and I flourished. I turned around, <laughs> and the mustache fell off <laughs> in the middle of the show. Yeah, oh, Lord. and we just kept going, and it was the show must go on. That was the yeah. first. That was the first one, and then I didn't do it again until um, uh, senior year, senior year of high school. You got to play the villain. No, not the villain. Oh, where well, actually, oh, yes, that was the villain again. That was the villain again. Because the first one was that was called uh, the Gypsy or the Gypsy Secret, and um, the 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 one I did in senior year was a musical called You're in Town. Mm. You know, You're in Town. I don't. It's a satire on big business and like um, regulation okay. by like government, 
and um, there was this so it's called urine town like like urine town like European <laughs> because like urine you, you with have, a U yeah with a U because you have to pay to pee in this in the oh society. boy it's that yeah it's public, that corrupt. public public <laughs> amenities public amenities are now privately controlled and I was the owner of the company that owned them called UGC urine oh. good company yikes yeah. It was it was it was a fun <laughs> show. I loved it because he was obsessed with bunnies for some reason. <laughs> he was, and he was like, it was a. Uh, one of his lines was like, "Hot and pfeffers in the air as the bunnies gets the chair." <laughs> Sang a song about bunnies. <laughs> yeah, it's it's called "Don't Be the Bunny." It's still like one of my favorite songs, and um, I, I think that you're a you're a you're a business owner, right? And you respect efficiency, and the the no, reason. He was, Oh, you weren't the business owner. I was the business owner, but he was quite mad. That was it. Was that was the implication? Oh, you could play it multiple ways. I played it like <laughs> generic villain, but it was very interesting. Well, I was thinking his attraction to bunnies could be that their efficiency with breeding is so great <laughs> that he he admires that in the rabbit. I don't think so. I think looking back on it, I feel like um, the rabbits are actually a comparison to the populace because mm. they grew too much, and you know they were like. Everybody, you know, you everyone's know. just a dime a dozen. There's so many of them. They're expendable. There's labor they're force. expendable, and they're they're taking up so much of the resources. Mm -hmm. And I think that's how I played it at the time. Yeah. Not with that much depth. Well, that's much more interesting than my interpretation. But like, <laughs> no, I saw another one of another production of you're in good of you're in town at Fullerton College. It was a small production, but by this class, but it was amazing. They had some great performers who were really great comedic timing and then I'd never cons I hadn't considered all the different ways you could play mm -hmm. my character which is, his name was Caldwell B. Cladwell and he was uh, it was it was interesting that Very brings up that brings up a good question mm -hmm. um, as an actor do you find it useful to view a different production of a role you are taking on um, or would you rather not watch that production maybe see it after you've played the role and compare your interpretation of the character to how the other actor may have interpreted it I would say the latter mm -hmm. I would say you form your own first because otherwise you're gonna be influenced by what you've seen mm -hmm. it's like when you love this musical and you have you sing along with the Broadway recording and so the Broadway recording is in your muscle memory when you sing and then you go up and they're like oh actually we want to extend it and then you accidentally cut off and then you're fired well <laughs> <laughs> That, that's, How drastic. That, that's that's what I would think. But like, um, I prefer to unless you're really struggling with the with understanding intellectual intellectually what's going on with the character, mm -hmm. and you can't get anything from your director, and they're kind of stumped. Can't get anything from classmates or any other people. I'd say then look at the original production and then or a a production, production. preferably a professional one, and see what choices they made. Sure. But also keep in mind what what what. Um, biases they're doing and what themes they're working with versus what you're working with. And this is only something I've discovered recently about myself is that I have a tendency to to uh, sort of mimic in some of my character portrayals. For example, if I'm doing a monologue from a movie, I'm going to have a tendency, and this might be common, but I'm going to have a tendency to play the character how the actor in the movie played it. And I think that's why we okay. are recommended not to choose movie monologues. Yeah. Because most of us have seen those movies and we can compare our performance to the actor's performance. Whereas with stage, if I haven't seen a production of something, I'm going to have nothing to base my performance off of and it's going to be a new interpretation of the character and all that good stuff. And it's it, that's, that's interesting because it brings... Um, it's been like the last couple of years to come to the conclusion that um, ultimately all these characters... Um, are different facets of yourself. Mm -hmm. You just it's um, it's like you have this this ball with all these stats on it, right? And there's different spikes where you're mm -hmm. more like you're more intelligent versus charming or versus beautiful. Like graph. And yeah, and like you have spikes in all of the areas. You just gotta find where it is and really push it if the character really needs it. Or if it's that big of a push, you know, then you probably need bring to it ask, down, or bring it, or yeah, bring it down if if it's big. Um, ultimately, all the characters are going to be core Dylan, mm -hmm. or they're going to be core Mason. It's just, um, you just got to bring it to the surface, and that's what gets kind of scary. It's like the long, 
the longer I do it, the more I realize, okay, you really, you know how like actors, a lot of times they do meditation, yoga, they have yeah. these really weird yeah. rituals, but you, they need that for their sanity. Oh, so yeah. Otherwise, you get all this different parts that you believe, because you brought it from yourself, so you're like, this is in me. Yep. And you start to get confused about... Uh, about who you are. About who you are and where you draw the line and mm-hmm. what really makes you, you. Um, it's that gray area. It's a gray area. And it's, I mean, it's it's real. Look at Heath Ledger. Look at any yeah. actor who's yeah. been so invested that it's they've of, gone to that extreme, you know? And I've noticed it happens a lot in film. Mm. It's a lot of method actors. Because it's a lot of times it's like, well, the first is schedule. Their schedule is so much oh, more yeah. intensive and not as set as a... Um, a rehearsal or stage productions rehearsal performance would be. Um, and correct me if you think this is inaccurate, but I think theater has a tendency to be more, more collaborative work on the acting. You are working with your scene partners in the space, with your director there, whereas in film, I think there's a lot more to do on your own. Um, yeah, I think there's a little bit of truth to that, but. For example, Heath Ledger, he went into a hotel room, he just talked to himself, he filmed himself, he did all these cr- like crazy yeah. extreme exercises yeah, in to get into that character. Mm-hmm. Um, and I have not, in, at least in my experience, known of someone in th- stage to do that. I'm sure it's been done, but... Well, um, you kind of get what I'm saying with that? Kind of. Um... All right, um... Here we are back. So uh, we were just talking about um, the difference between stage acting and screen acting. And as far as, um, I believe, Dylan, your question was if you... uh, We were comparing the methods used by stage and and screen actors. And I was commenting on how screen actors, in my experience, seem to do more internal, personal work, whereas stage actors do more collaborative work. I think it, that was where I left off. Yeah, and I would say that's very true. Um, in my my experience, it's been very much that that has been the the truth. But uh, um, I also believe that you can take a lot of that collaborative work, and it you just have to do it before. And that's, sure. I feel like the more successful you get, like these big name celebrity actors, I don't know how they find the time to connect. I feel like at that point, they're really just drawing on a general experience that they've had in the past yes, and yes. applying it. And it works because it's it seems like it's a new person for us. Um, but I feel like the most successful ones and probably the most underrated actors are the ones who um, are able to find that time to collaborate and build this, this project and um, build the relationships mm-hmm. and be able to see the effect of one another that the words have because I feel like a lot of times in film like you can you can also stand on set with your scene partner if they're just filming maybe all the other person's lines yep um, but um, and you can see the effect but if you haven't done that work beforehand it's hard to see it in theater you rehearse as a group and you do this you do the scenes you go up and usually in professional theater you're usually off book by the time you start rehearsals oh yeah and so that you just kind of are already starting to go you've already made a bunch of choices and I feel like that's where they are similar actually you, you're prof- in both professional wor- worlds you um, are supposed to do the work beforehand make decide to make choices based upon maybe what you've talked about with the director or the scene mm-hmm. or the, the theme of the show but um and then ultimately, then that's the director's job to sculpt it either through the shots, framing a different type of mood, or uh, through the acting. And I still feel like the acting is really underrated here. And I don't know if I've already said here that. Here at our school? Um, well, in the film department. Oh, in the film department. They, they, um, oh, you mean it's under, under the f- uh, not appreciated, but it's not the highlight of the film department. The highlight is the filming. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, yeah. I, and I feel like it should be a super collaborative process. But the, the thing is, our the people here are students and they're learning how to do sure, their craft, yeah. and so their focus is on learning how to do their craft. So I can I can respect that. They also have very very brutal time schedules on some of these projects yeah. because of class. And I feel like given more time, they would take the time to really rehearse with their actors and develop the relationships and the characters and all that. I know for. Most of the films I've been involved in here, I've only rehearsed once for one film. 
Mm -hmm. I, I have only done yeah. one rehearsal for a film. I would say about the same. And it was very useful. Yeah. It, it really helped with the lines. It helped with getting into the mindset of the, my character and the character who was playing opposite to me. It helped with all that. Um, but I think in a, a academic setting of film, it's it's difficult just because of all the time. And it, like you said, they're, they're still learning as well as us. Um, and it's also, I feel like, the, the time... Uh, the length of their videos. Sure, because yeah. Because they're all short films, they don't really have table reads. Mm -hmm. They really just shoot out the script as they and then they come to callbacks. And yes, we'll yes. We'll do that at callbacks. Um, so I can see that being difficulty as well because me, Dylan, P Dill Pickle, and uh, the Vault Master Mason, here, <laughs> we were doing this reading for this film. And I mm -hmm. thought it was a staged reading, like more we were going to be doing it in front of people, but it was mainly for the writer to see. It was a table read. Yeah, it was, it was a table read. And um, Was that your but, first table read? Um, yeah, that was my first like full length film table read. Mm, and, yes. And that was, it was really nice because we were building relationships and or actually a lot of the people who were in like my, my the group of friends I had in this film and we were including Dylan and like three to four other people who actually already knew. Mm -hmm. And so that was really cool because those relationships were already um, established and it wasn't as much of a stretch. We were just we could draw them. on our real life friendships to play the characters that are friends in the film. Yeah. Whereas if we were acting with people we didn't know that well, it'd be different. Yeah. All right. So I guess we have about five minutes left in this. So I want to um, take a swerve on to, um, I guess, how you Dylan start to create a character, or is, is there you? I, you were talking earlier about how you. You tend to mimic people. Do you feel like that's changed? I do. Since I switched into the major, I think that's I'm I'm starting to get away from that. Um, more, less less impersonation and more invention is what I want to get out of it. I want to be able to create an original character um, instead of replicating what someone else has done. Mm -hmm. um, of course, there's great examples of types of characters and different ways to play a certain character in film and theater, but at the end of the day, our job is to be that character. And a director wants a new character. They don't want something that's already been done. Yeah. I th we were talking about choices. I think that an actor's most valuable tool is to be able to make strong choices um, and show that and highlight those choices, whether they're good or not. Um, is to me not as important as the ability to make that choice. I would agree. Um, I wouldn't have agreed with you. I feel like a couple of years ago, but mm -hmm. more recently, I'm I'm finding that like, well, as an actor, if you can approach a project and you're like, I can do it this way, this way, this way, this way, and this way, and mm -hmm. they have like six, you already have six ways, and the director's like, okay, great, because that could work. Yeah. And, or or maybe only these three work with sure. the team we're going for, and that's. Yeah, that's been very valuable. Um, I still like um, sometimes starting from an archetype to build a character. Because I feel like me personally, it helps me loosen up my body rather than staying in my... I, have a, uh, I tend to have a little bit of a stiff stance mm -hmm. if I don't feel fully comfortable with a character. And that's apparent to mainly to the people who know me. But um, um, I still like starting with, like I guess, an archetype of like... Um, you know, like, we just did this project Anonymous, you know, mm -hmm. and we were playing various refugees, and, you know, there were some times where we did accents for characters, and sometimes when we didn't, and uh, I feel like um, starting an accent can at least get you as the actor, even if you haven't experienced that, to kind of empathize with it and mm -hmm. or imagine, and then that already kind of starts to take your body to that place like that you would go when you were a kid, and you would... Play. Sure, you're drawing on experiences starting with that point, mm -hmm. building off of that. Yeah. Yeah. As far as me, I tend to, yeah, I, I tend to like to build characters that way. I like to, um, I like to, I guess, just re reading it really. I feel like yeah. the best sense I get of it, no matter like through it, any exercise like writing or, or acting aloud, is, is to, um, just reread it over and over oh, yeah. and understand all the possible little minute possibilities and then and then I get to have fun and relax and play around with 
um, exploring those. At the end of the day, it all goes back to the text and yeah. what is said and what is not said but inferred, and all that is how you interpret and build that person. Yeah. So, um, I don't know, is there anything else you want to touch on? Um, no, I think we should uh, do some sort of an outro. All right, um, this has been uh, um, Opening the Vault with Mason Banks and Dill Pickle. This is the first installment, hopefully of many. And that creaking sound you hear <laughs> is the vault closing. <laughs> It's the vault closing for the day. Well, we'll uh, we'll figure out a way to reach out and ask some, uh, ask for questions or topics, and uh, hopefully have some more to discuss next week. Yeah. See you then. <laughs>